Hey, this is Paul Booth from Last Rites Tattoo in New York City. Nowadays, the word legend gets thrown around all over the place. We hear it, you know, we read it. But a true legend, not only to tour, but in art in general, is Paul Booth. And we're here right behind a pretty uh, disturbing, but, you know, a normal thing for you right here, right? Yeah, I guess it's pretty normal for me. <laughs> and first and foremost, I want to ask you, when did you discover that you had a certain talent? And were you drawing, like, cartoons or were you drawing already dark art from the beginning? Um, I won an award in the sixth grade for a poster contest. That's when I knew drawing was my thing, I guess. I don't know. I, uh, I've just always drawn pictures. I, uh, grade school, I found old notebooks from when I was a kid that were um, uh, real rudimentary skulls drawn on them and super villains and things like that. So I seem to always have been in a dark place, whatever age I've been at, you know. And so. what made you pick up the pen and pencil and the pen and paper? Um, pen and pencil, pen and paper. <laughs> well, you know, I never really got picked for baseball when I was a kid, so uh, I stayed home and drew pictures, and usually filled with anger. <laughs> so that's really what happened, and there's the results. <laughs> and how did that turn into you becoming a metal fan? Because obviously I know you're a huge metal fan. Well, you know, with aggressive art comes aggressive music, you know, and vice versa. So um, it's always been a natural fit for me. You know, getting the aggression out is always really important, and music does that as well as art. So. What are your favorite songs or records to tattoo with? Tattooing? Uh, well, these days I listen to a lot of dark ambient music, uh, a lot of stuff that doesn't have any lyrics, you know, real dark atmospheric kind of things. Stoner, dune metal, uh, uh, some black metal still. Um, uh, what else? Um, I listen to a lot of different kinds of things. I even listen to doom jazz, you know. So anything that has a dark vibe to it I seem to be attracted to. But as far as particular bands, of course, there's always Slayer, you know, and it always pumps me up and um, uh, things like that. So uh, it would be hard to list bands, really, that, that I like, you know. Um, it'd be hard to say, and <laughs> <laughs> narrowing it down. <laughs> Do you remember your first concert? I think it was ACDC when I was a kid, an arena show. Yeah, yeah, that was... Um, Hold on, my phone is ringing. <laughs> I was trying to ignore it, but <laughs> is that one of your is that one of your creations? Or yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I make my own ringtones. You know, nothing better to do. So. <laughs> and you also have to, uh, a music CD out. You already have another one coming I, I out. I have an old CD. I did um, kind of experimental ambient stuff. Uh, the new album is coming out hopefully in October, uh, most likely by Halloween, and. Um, it's basically, what it really is, is like dark art meditation. It's meant for creative meditation. It's kind of like something you'd listen to while you paint or, or draw or write. Um, it's meant to kind of be atmospheric background sounds, you know, soundscapes, that kind of thing. And is this something that you collaborate with your daughter with? Because I know she's a musician as well. well. We've done some collaborations, yeah. Yeah, she's helped me, of course, on my album. She gave me some good advice, and she's an awesome musician, incredible singer. So, you know, it's uh, always good to have it in the family. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, what better connection than art, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I run everything by her, you know. Does this sound okay? <laughs> and what was your first tattoo, and when did you get it? Uh, my first tattoo was her name uh, when I was 19. Uh, I got her name on me because I was freaking out about being a father, you know. I'm like, right, well, maybe if I got her name tattooed on me, I'll be able to handle this better, you know, which it did help. Where did you get it? Uh, on my arm right here. It's old rose. Oh, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> I got old 80s tattoos, you know. <laughs> who did that tattoo? Uh, Ernie White, the guy who taught me originally, uh, out of Butler, New Jersey. It was at the time. He's dead now, but uh, he was the guy who got me started, you know. And from all the metal legends you've tattooed, who is the biggest wimp? Who is the one that oh. cries the most during the process? You know, the last time I answered that, the guy hates me now, so... <laughs> I'll tell you the toughest. Yep. The toughest two happen to be two close friends, and that's Inselmo and King, honestly. And, you know, King, I did his head. It was about four, four or five hours on his head, and he sat like a rock through the whole thing. But as far as wimps go, um, 
there's a couple black metal guys that aren't as tough as they <laughs> like to think they are, but <laughs> I'm not going to name names. But I've heard that you have a pretty rough hat. Maybe that's one of the reasons. Uh, people say that probably because more of the persona, but a lot of people I tattoo um, say it wasn't as bad as they thought it was. But you know what? I'm fine either way. I, you know, I, it's part of the reason I got into tattooing was the sadistic factor. So, you know, I, I enjoy the pain. <laughs> giving it, receiving it, whatever it is, pain is refreshing, you know. It makes you feel alive. It's like Pinhead said, you know, some things just must be endured. And have you ever tattooed yourself? Uh, I did one on my leg when I was starting out, um, just because at that time that was kind of the ritual. You had to tattoo yourself before you could tattoo anyone else, you know. So I did one on my leg, and uh, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a reverse image on the other side of my leg still. It came out all right then? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it came out okay. I mean, you know, I, um, I suppose it could have been worse. And hey, man, before we get out of here, why don't you tell us about, you were one of the organizers for this expo. Uh, why do it this way? Because it's not only about the tutorials. Obviously, we are in a gallery here yesterday. Mm -hmm. They were actually painting a nude model. What, what, what is the concept behind this like, entire kind of, more than an exhibition, it's an expo slash exhibition slash tattoo show, you know? Yeah, well, you know, in the earlier years, when I was your age, I, um, there was a lot of, uh, the art world really didn't accept tattooers as artists. And there's been a big push um, to kind of show that tattoo artists are actual fine artists as well. Just because they're on skin doesn't mean they're not artists, you know. But we get neglected a lot. So we tend to, you know, use these surroundings as an opportunity to show that we can paint as well and that you know the painting seminars of course you know art artists are artists whatever the medium tattooing just happens to be one of them but um, many of the tattooers out there paint as well and and you know it's good to recognize all facets absolutely art is art yeah and you have your gallery as well, so that's obviously, you're not just preaching it, doing here, but you're doing right. it year-round, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your, your place is basically now built around an art gallery. Right, right, yeah, we're an art gallery and a tattoo studio, and uh, they, they function separately but simultaneously, right. you know, so it's, it's kind of like uh, um, a good bridge between the two. You know, so we, we show tattooers, we show fine artists, we show all kinds of artists, and we rotate shows about every month. So it's, um, it's good, it's refreshing, you know, there's always new inspiration going on there, right. so. And I know you were very good friends with H.R. Geiger. What are some of the fav your favorite memories, favorite moments that you spent with him? Probably my greatest mem memory with Geiger, other than showing uh, uh, Geiger, sorry. <laughs> um, she, yeah, he got me started. Um, uh, I showed at his museum, uh, which was monumental for me because I, uh, I had grew up on him and as a major inspiration in my youth and has done a lot to shape my art. Um, so that was huge for me. But before that, I had met him back in, the first time I met him was in 93. And I asked to take a photo with him. There's a photo op situation. And uh, I was wearing a black shirt with a red like 666 across it. You know, this was the 80s. so or 90s <laughs> and uh, um, and he's in all black and he walks over you know to do the picture and he looks at my shirt and he looks around the room and he finds a can of coke on the table across the room he walks over and gets it comes back to me and holds the can up in front of his shirt to balance out the red in the photo not a big deal to most people but for me as an artist that to me is someone who's like always thinking art you know, little things like that can go a long way. And that inspired me greatly because it was like, yeah, quick photo, sure. You know, and, and, but no, not for him. You know, it was like, oh, we have to set this up just right. And, you know, and you find some red and it happens to be a can of Coke. And I just I was blown away. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, man. I want to thank you very All much. Right, man. Yeah, not only for uh, you know talking to us, but for what you do for art. Not only to tour, oh. but just art in general. Well, thank you. And you know, being the guy that the metal guys go to means a lot to the community because you know somebody's got to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> always happy to do it. All right, brother. Thank right you. On. Thanks, man. Cool.